This is the DF64E made by Turin and sold through Espresso Outlet. I've had this grinder for a month and I'm excited to share with you some of the reasons why I love this grinder but also some of the reasons that I don't. Uh, but before we do that, I just want to say that this grinder was sent to me from Espresso Outlet in exchange for a review, uh, but this is completely unbiased and they get no say in what I do or make with this video. I uh, just wanted to give a fair warning. All these thoughts and opinions on this are fully mine. So this is a predecessor to the beloved DF64. The DF64 grinder is known for a lot of kind of issues that it has between burr alignment, between um, some of the, the finicky little things like needing to buy a 3D printed uh, grind indicator. The font was off on the original ones and it looked bad. There's some little tweaks here and there that could have made that grinder better. But overall, the price of that grinder coming in at $400 made it absolutely amazing grinder to buy. And you could add $200 SSP burrs in it and make it an incredible grinder just dealing with a little bit of quarks and having to get a few 3D printed things. This grinder came along as its predecessor and came with some more premium parts and a little bit better built and they changed a few things along the road. And this comes in around $450 give or take. Um, it, the price varies on it. Um, but at the time of making it, it was $450. Uh, so this comes with a lot of different features on it and I want to go through starting off with the fact that this name comes from DF64, meaning 64 millimeter flat burrs, so two circular burrs that lay on top of each other that are inside this grinder. And it start, it's DF64E because of the electronic dosing that it comes with, which is right here. Or it could mean E for the fact that this is an espresso based grinder. So the original DF64, you had the privilege to make adjustments from fine all the way for espresso to coarse all the way for pour over or even cold brew and everywhere in between. This grinder is dedicated to espresso use only and you cannot do the pour over stuff with that at all. So included with this grinder are this hopper right here, the electronic dosing, a plastic dosing cup, and a little stainless steel funnel, and then a single dosing bellow hopper. All of these also come with the wood accents finished on there. Um, and then it has a grind dial on the bottom here that indicates all the way from 5 to 60. Uh, sorry, 0 to 60 and everywhere in between that as well. Um, so starting off, they did some interesting things and I want to go over every single feature on here. So you got your grind indication here and you adjust it with this little lever on the bottom and that I find to be very, very good on the way that you can fine tweak things as you go along. This adjustment allows you to move the bottom burr up and down in this grinder in order to make those fine adjustments that you need. Um, I find this being very, very well off to produce the quality of coffee that you need for espresso and allows you to really, really dial it in and get that perfect shot every single time. One of the things that I did notice is if you change the burr set out on here, you can take this grinder apart and you can adjust the lever on there to make it be able to do um, SSP burrs. So you need to make a fine you need to make an indication difference on this in order to add different burrs, which is a super simple, easy thing to do. So my thought was maybe I could adjust the grind setting in order to go from pour over to espresso because I found that I was in the 35 range on this for espresso. So if I figured if I brought that down to the zero to 10 range was my espresso range, maybe I could get up to pour over in the 60 range. I found that not to be the case and that's something that you can't do. You could make this a dedicated pour over grinder by adjusting that and just making it pour over but it doesn't give you enough range in order to get the pour over range out of it and espresso at the same time. But that's not necessarily a knock on the grinder because it is not advertised for that and it is advertised for espresso only. Uh, that is one of the drawbacks to spending an extra $50 on this versus the DF64, which would allow you to do both pour over and espresso for $50 less. A couple of the things that I do like is they have four little metal grips here that allow you to hold the porta filter in place. Any other porta filter outside of this is one for a Breville dual boiler. Um, the Breville dual boiler hooks on the arms here are slightly different and a little bit smaller, so another one would fit a little bit more snug. But I found even with the Breville dual boiler, I don't have to worry too much about the portafilter falling out when you grind into it. 
and they thought that through with making this funnel, allowing it to sit on top of it so it works, makes it a little easier and keeps it a little cleaner on there. And then you can flip this funnel over and use it for your dosing cup here, which also works quite well. So this is a nice little feature of having both of these where you can grind straight into it and I find that really does keep the mess at a minimum. However, it does kind of get in the way of the adjustment knob here. But what I typically find is the catch cup sits on my scale and I usually weigh out the beans in the catch cup if I'm single dosing and then put the catch cup in here and then grind into that and no problem at all whatsoever with that. But it does kind of get in the way of that arm a little bit, but I do find the adjustment on it to be very, very nice and very, very um, satisfying to adjust in between grind settings. So I'll take that placement and I'll take the mechanism that they used, even though it does kind of get in the way of the catch cup just a little bit. But other than that, it's fine. On here you have three different indicators. You have a single cup, you have a little hand which represents stop or go, and then you have a two cup thing. So what I typically do is I set this up for my two cup double dose of 18 grams, and I utilize the one cup for a half a second one to purge any of the old grounds that are sitting inside the grinder from the day before, and I find that to be work pretty well. I find to get like a couple grams, clicking the stop button, pause and go, really, really quick, um, does allow you to get one to two grams in there to do that fine adjustments that you need to. Um, when you're doing just single dosing, you just hit the pause, you just hit that center button and go. It's pretty easy to adjust the grind settings on how much time it takes to come out. So this is weighted by time, so it takes me a, about six seconds, give or take, to do 18 grams at a setting for my Breville Dual Boiler, uh, which is a very, very great time to put in perspective my Eureka Atom 75, which is known as an incredibly fast, great grinder, at more than triple the price of this, does it in a little around three seconds. So twice as long at six seconds, that's more than doable for a lot of different places and a lot of different things like that. So right here you have the hopper, and the hopper has this nice little mechanism on the back of it to allow you to open it and close it. Um, which makes it pretty easy to uh, lift up the hopper and pull out the beans if you want to use the hopper. It's great. Um, if you don't want to use the hopper, um, you don't have to because it comes with this nice wooden single dosing bellow. And that bellow puffs out the, the grounds pretty easily and it has a nice wooden top along to match the wooden um, accents on the grinder itself, which I find to be incredibly nice and looks incredibly great while grinding. Um, yeah, so let's go ahead and grind some beans. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put this big hopper to the side here, and we're gonna come back to that in just a little bit, and I'm gonna talk more about that. And I'm gonna put this little catch cup underneath of it. We are gonna turn on the grinder, which has a little detail here right on the side. You're just gonna simply click that, and you'll see LED lights going on top to indicate that it is on. And then when you are ready to grind, you simply just click one of the buttons that you want to grind and it will grind um, continuously until either the timer's done or until you hit the button again for the center button. So we're gonna go ahead and grind and I'm gonna use the bellows and show you what that looks like. So first off, the one thing that I've never noticed is this little catch cup part was rattling. Never had that as an issue before. But you're gonna keep it running and then you're gonna bellow while you have it running. So definitely a little different on there, um, but still gets the job done and you have a nice grind for whatever you need it for. And you are done and you can shut off your grinder like so. Uh, which is super nice, super convenient, does a great job. Uh, one of the things that I love about this is uh, on the inside, you can get to the inside by using an Allen key, which is way different than the original DF64, which had a screw on top that had a problem of being cross-threaded. They solved this issue with allowing you to have two, an Allen key to simply offload the top, and I found that the tolerances on the inside are way tighter than they are on a DF64, which means the gap the gap for coffee grounds to sit in there is much, much smaller 
I want to say probably around 50% than what the DF64 was, which allows less grounds to stay on the inside of it and allows you to get most of the grounds out through the bellow system. So I'm, I welcome that change and it's way easier in my opinion to take this off and put it back on in comparison to the DF64 original one. Um, so starting off is a couple of the cons. I've already mentioned the switch. Another one is with the hopper. The hopper, when it's in use, you have to pull this back and it sits out quite a bit from the grinder, this little piece of plastic here on the side. When you pull it out, it sits quite a bit back from the grinder, which allows it to be, which makes you have to put it further away from the wall than what I would prefer it to be. One of the things that is interesting about this, the new DF64s are they're starting to come with the cable on the side which is very, very new, and I haven't really seen that in a grinder before. But one of the things that is a pro about that grinder is it allows you to have it flush with your wall and not have that cable sticking out the back, um, which makes it pretty nice because you can just route this cable through and behind an espresso machine and have all the slack sitting behind an espresso machine in order to hide it, which is a very, very welcome thing in my opinion. However, I do find if you're using the hopper and you have this piece of plastic facing toward the back, that piece of plastic then gets in the way of the wall and it can't sit flush up in there. So you have to put it to the side, which then allows you to see the big chunk of plastic sitting out the back of your grinder, which is not great in my opinion. To be honest though, after using this grinder for months and knowing that the SSP burrs will make a difference if you put it in there, but this is without the SSP burrs, stock as it is, um, I just find a lot of positive changes in the fact that this isn't near as finicky as the original DF64. If pour over isn't something that is important to you, isn't something that you use on a regular basis, um, then this is one of the best valued grinders for espresso. Um, I have this sitting next to my Eureka 75 and I find this incredibly great, um, incredibly enjoyable to use uh, and honestly it makes my uh, Eureka Atom 75 feel a little neglected sitting on the countertop with this thing next to it. This does more than a good enough job for any home user for espresso and honestly there's not a lot of reasons to go up in the realm of that. You get great cups of coffee out of it, great cups of espresso out of it. Um, you can't do pour overs with it at its setting, but that's okay. Uh, most grinders aren't doing very well at both of them. I would even say things like the Niche Zero at $300 does not do a great job of pour overs, um, but does way better in the espresso realm of things. So that would always lead me toward um, the DF64 because it's $300 less. So this is definitely worth it. If you've gotten this far in the uh, video, please like and subscribe. Um, let me know. Uh, one of the things that I love uh, about this is um, the build quality of it. The build quality in comparison to the original DF64, which I felt was great, um, this one surpasses it like crazy. Uh, one of the things that I notice about it is I love the finish of it. It's more of a matte black now, and instead of vinyl wrap like the original one, this is almost feels like a truck bed liner in there. So it kind of has that black uh, slight texture, but not too much texture, but feels really, really well bit. I'm relating everything to a truck because I'm from the Midwest, so that sorry for everybody out there that isn't around trucks and don't know what a bed binder feels like. Um, but this is an incredibly well-built, solid grinder. It doesn't feel like it's gonna go anywhere. It sits nicely on the countertop. It looks great, in my opinion, way better than the original DF64. These um, wooden accents just make it feel so premium and so nice to use. The fact that I can go between using the catch cup if I want to, to using a porta filter if I want to and grind directly in there. I find it's pretty consistent when you do the timing dose in there and I will just leave my porta filter in, grind straight to it and that's one less step that I have to do. I'll slap on the little included funnel that comes with it on my porta filter so it's not making it a mess and then I'll pull this straight down to my countertop and do the WTT which is the stirring of grounds and it does a phenomenal job. Uh, so if you have any questions on this grinder, if you want to know more about it or if there's anything I can do to help you, please let me know. Uh, please write a comment in the descriptions um, and again please like and subscribe. That really helps me produce more content and thank you so much for watching.